This is the Vancouver2010.com podcast, your window into the Vancouver 2010 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. Hi, I'm Mark Bathler from Seattle, Washington. Hi, I'm Megan Larifalm. I'm from Durango, Colorado. Nick Brush from Panorama, BC. Chris Williamson from Toronto, Ontario. Joseph Kunz, I'm from Switzerland. Claude Delesh, and I'm competing for Austria. Kunik Vinata from Japan. Thomas Nolte, I'm from Germany. Talon Skills Biggins, uh, from Great Britain. Fred Francois, uh, Jean de la France. Nick Katanzarite, competing for the United States. I'm Katya from Finland. I'm Lauren Ostergraf. Dalson Jones. We're in Whistler watching adaptive alpine skiing today. It's fast and it's fun to watch. We have skiers in the mono ski, we have standing skiers, and we have skiers in the visually impaired class. And so I'm just trying to imagine what it would be like coming down a hill at full speed with a blindfold on and a guide telling me when the next turn ahead is. So it's amazing to watch and we're gonna learn a bit about it today. Only about a week after I had my accident, I was run over by a car that a, uh, another injured guy came into hospital for some routine work and he came and chatted to me whilst I was on bed rest and told me that there was something called sit skiing and I've always been a skier, I skied since I was nine years old uh, and it was something that I wanted to carry on and do after my accident. It's always a thrill to be going over 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, I usually say I don't have a driver's license since I'm blind but I uh, travel in my job faster than most people drive to work. You're, you're in the nature and you can go and go and go. Uh, we travel around a lot, see many places in the world. I like speed. <laughs> it's for the ski ball, please, yeah. This is so much more than just skiing. It's getting friends all over the world. Uh, it's, it's really the enjoyment and the fact that you're free from your wheelchair. Um, <laughs> I feel like I don't have a disability. Paralympic alpine skiing isn't that different from the brand of alpine you see at the Olympic Games. Men and women compete in downhill, super G, giant slalom, slalom and super combined. We went to the slopes of Whistler to ask how they do it. What are some of the commands you use or some of the calls you'll make? Um, I'll call upcoming combinations and gates, whether it's delays or in slalom, hairpins and flushes. And then I'll call uh, also terrain changes in the hills, so uh, like bumps or jumps, depending on what uh, comes up. Ice, yeah. How do you communicate out there? How we communicate with uh, this Bluetooth system? So the communication is critical to what we do just because a, I can't see where I'm on the course very well, so she keeps me informed. That way I know what's coming. And then by my calling the distance, she doesn't have to look back. I guess there's certain categories. Can you tell us about those? Sure. Do you want yeah, to um, There's a B3 category, which we are in, and it's just, um, I guess, losing, starting to lose your eyesight. Um, you've gotten qualified. B2 categories, I would say you can see anywhere from maybe 20 feet max in front of you. It's not much. It's not very much at all. And then B1 um, category is where they're completely blind and their goggles are blacked out. What made you want to become a guide? Uh, really the opportunity. I get to go, I get to travel the world, and I get to ski. And if I'm skiing, I'm happy. So the opportunity to get to work with Chris and ski and be a high caliber, world class athlete. What, uh, what kind of skills do you need to be a, a good monoskier? You don't have to fear the, the speed and also the right skis surely and then much training, training and training, yeah. Probably the most important part of the sit ski is the shock. Um, we use similar to a, a motocross shock, something you'd see on a motorcycle. Um, that's, and uh, that's this. Right, right. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah. Right. Um, and so it's got it's got air and oil as well as the spring, um, and we adjust that based based on conditions in the event, because uh, you don't want to be too bouncy and you don't want to be uh, not bouncy enough, uh, not sucking up enough stuff. And then you know I've got my bucket that I'm sitting in, got my riggers, and these operate kind of as our ski poles. Um, so like when we're when we're down at the bottom here, I use them to push around like this. But actually, when I'm skiing, I pull the, the little string. And it's like a little ski tip. We use that for balance. And then so it just flips back up when I want to push around. Uh, and for me, I use shoulder straps. I don't know if you can see them underneath the bib here. Yep. Because I'm a high level injury, I'm a paraplegic at T4. 
So I'm paralysed from just about the nipple line down. Yeah. So I've got no stomach muscles. So in order to balance, I actually use my shoulders and that's how I steer. So there might be some people out there who are in wheelchairs who think, well, I've got no balance, I can't go skiing. Well, you adapt and you improvise and you, know, you find a way of being able to do it. There are lots of people come down here who do have that abdominal strength and they will have, uh, their buckets will be a lot lower at the back and they won't bother with the shoulder straps so they can just use their hips to angulate to get the ski on an edge. I started here with the Whistler Adaptive Ski Programme and the volunteers and instructors there are just fantastic and they really helped me. They dragged me out of the trees a lot. I used to spend a, <laughs> I spent a lot of time falling, which I still do, obviously, uh, uh, but I was crashing into the trees and they were very patient with me and, and took a lot of time with me and I, and I, and I thank them so much for, for their patience because without it I wouldn't have come to where I am now. What skills do you need to win in this sport? Yeah, heart, <laughs> strong heart. How has the sport evolved or how has it changed or grown in the last seven years? Yeah, the sport changed a lot, especially on the financial uh, side, because when I started I had to pay almost uh, everything on my, for myself, and but then now we, uh, we got sponsors and everything. How many years have you been uh, competing in Adaptive Alpine? 16 years. So how did you get involved in it then? Uh, I learned to ski and I wanted to keep learning how to go faster so they put me on the race team. What does it take to be on the podium? What kind of skills do you need? <sighs> a lot of hard work. Uh, we're all working really hard to, to make it there and uh, on a course like this you got to be strong and you got to ski aggressive and uh, got to go for it. I mean, I would think spectators would, in fact, love watching the speed at which people can go. I know a lot of people like watching the blind skiers because it's almost like a dance, the way that we have to go together. And people find that pretty remarkable to see. You know, the sport is visually fantastic. You know, we are flying down the mountain. We're not just pootling down at a slow speed. It's not. We're doing 60 to 70 miles an hour. And, uh, and we're, I'm terrified. So, uh, and so is my mum and dad. So who's contending for the podium in 2010? I would put uh, Christopher Devlin Young from the United States. I'd put uh, Josh Dueck from Canada. Um, I'd put Luke Donovan in there. Um, some of the Japanese guys, the Austrian guys, German guys, always tough for sure. You know, any one of 15 guys, 15 to 20 guys are probably competing for that podium in the downhill anyway. Hopefully this will uh, open people's eyes, pardon the pun from a blind person, but uh, <laughs> this is high level competitive sport and we're going quite fast, so come out and enjoy. So what do you think of the course out here? Oh, it's so much fun. It is fantastic, <laughs> yeah. What makes it fun then? Well, it's just the speed was really fun, the rhythm of it, the way they use the terrain, you're just weaving and bobbing with the hill. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's like flying, really. It's a challenging hill for sure, it's very technical. Um, you know, it's different to a lot of downhills that we ski. Uh, lots of turns, some air at the bottom, so it's challenging, but really fun. My vision is that it will be very difficult to accept and that I will do everything for it. For someone who's watching this and who could potentially um, become involved in this sport, how, how would you suggest to them to get into it? Go out and have fun, get in your local groups. I mean, it's all about, you know, starting, even if it's an able-bodied group, jump in with them and eventually it'll come and you'll see other participants with disabilities through organizing committees and just go out and have fun, really. If it's able-bodied, disabled, whatever, recreation, it's all about getting out there and enjoying yourself. For more information about Paralympic Alpine skiing or for other podcasts, go to Vancouver2010.com.